Our final uh, grantee, and it's uh, he's professor uh, uh, at the Astro Center at the Academy of uh, Sciences in Torunia uh, in uh, Poland. He's going to talk about extra solar planets uh, and the way that he set up four uh, robotic telescopes in the southern hemisphere. Now, uh, you'll notice that uh, Professor uh, Konatsky does a lot of gestures. Um, it's a good point to point out he's actually controlling what's on the screen. This is the future of PowerPoints. It's absolutely fantastic. Please welcome onto the stage Professor Maciej Konatsky. Thank you. Hi everybody, today I will tell you a story about our astronomical project Solaris. As you may have heard, I will be using Microsoft's Kinect system because the production company from Poland that actually produced this presentation, which, which was also Oscar nominated, not the presentation, the, the company, uh, told me that uh, PowerPoint is pure evil, so no pure evil here. So, so here is project Solaris. Okay, just, there it is. So we are from Torun, Poland. Torun is a city where Nicolas Copernicus was born. Actually, our office is about, are at about 100 meters from the building where he was born. So my team members are it's Stan, Chris, uh, Milena, Piotr, and myself. And uh, we have a, a fifth mem a sixth member of the team, which is not in this picture. So let, let me start this story. Uh, Sun is just one of many, many stars in, the, in a galaxy which we call the Milky Way. And uh, it resides in the so-called spiral arm of our galaxy, which is pretty far from the center of the galaxy. Here is our solar system. Uh, since mid-90s, we've been discovering planets, exoplanets, orbiting other stars, which in the vast majority are in the solar neighborhood. The, it, it may be just a bit too dark for the sensors to see me, if you could, yes. yes. Uh, so the ultimate goal is to detect a, uh, an Earth analog, which is uh, an Earth-like planet, which we can use in the future to move on when the time comes. Here it is. Uh, uh, with current technology, it would really take many, many years to reach another star, uh, approximately many tens of thousands of years. So we really, we really, really need to work on this. Oops, the other way around. All right. So, but our journey of travel was a hard one. Uh, many hundred years ago, we all thought that crossing the sea is a challenge. Then it was a challenge to conquer the sky. But so it seemed to be challenging to go into space. So eventually, I'm, I'm sure, we'll find a way to visit other stars. This is one of the concepts for a spaceship that can reach other stars. It's powered by a solar sail. So what we want to do in this Project Solaris. We want to search for other planets because this is a way to understand how planets are formed. Uh, but the ultimate question is really, are we alone in the universe? Uh, you may not know this, but if you look in the, in the sky, which is full of stars, uh, it turns out that more than 50% of these stars are actually binary or multiple stellar systems. So it's actually quite of an interesting scientific question to see if, if there could be planets orbiting other stars. And so this is the main goal of the project Solaris, which is to try to find planets orbiting binary stars. Here you have two possible cases. One is two stars orbited by two planets, and uh, the other case is uh, two stars orbited by one planet. So these are the types of stars that we will be looking at, binary stars. And if we get to discover a planet, a sunset from such a planet may look like this, a double sunset. This is actually not something new. Uh, you, you may know this picture. This is a picture from Star Wars, 1977, by uh, George Lucas. This is a, a, a planet uh, uh, from which the 
uh, uh, where the uh, well Luke Skywalker lived, and he's watching Double Sunset. So uh, the, the theme of uh, planets around binary stars were present in pop culture way before it was actually possible to find such planets. But this is something that you may not know. Actually, the first case that I'm aware of of a planet in a binary, around a binary star was by a Polish writer, Stanislaw Lem. It was 1961, and the book was called Solaris, so way before George Lucas. Um, and this is a picture from a movie, Hollywood movie, that was based on uh, Lem's book. And this is also why we called our project Solaris. Uh, the project has two goals. One is to first to set up an, a global network of robotic telescopes and then to use this network to uh, look at binary stars. So we will be setting up telescopes in several locations. Hello. Here it is, uh, near Barral in Argentina. Then we already have two telescopes in South Africa. It doesn't like me. Here it is, near Sutherland in South Africa. And we also have one telescope uh, in Australia near Kuna Barabran. So, uh, to be more precise, we will be looking at a very special type of binary stars. These binary stars are, co are called eclipsing binaries, which means that they eclipse each other, which causes change, a uh, drop in their brightness. But when you add the planet to this picture, the moment when this change in brightness happens will vary. So we will be looking at these eclipses, see if the moment of eclipses vary, and this way we will get to detect extrasolar planets. But there is more that you can do with these types of binaries. Uh, namely, you, can, you get to study these stars with very high precision, which is also very important. So by looking at eclipsing binary stars, you can learn a lot about basic uh, param parameters of stars like temperature, mass, radius. And this is a very important subject because our sun is just one of many stars. And these stars are not constant. They change. They are born, they grow up, and they expire. So one day our sun will expire and we'll have to find a new place to live. So our sun was born four and a half billion years ago out of a cloud of dust and gas. But in about two billion years, the sun will become hot, so hot that it will be hard to live. And in about five billion years, our sun will become a red giant. At this stage, the sky will look like this. And when you see a picture like this, it's time to move on to a different planet. <laughs> but it won't happen during the Danish presidency, so don't worry. <laughs> You have about five billion years. So eventually, we really need to develop a way of traveling to other stars, because we will have to find a new home, and this could be our home around a binary star. But seriously, sir, here is the Solaris project on the scientific side. Side. So we will have four telescopes and three locations, Australia, Africa, and South America. South America. In Australia, we, we already have one telescope, in Africa, two. In fact, my group is actually now in Australia setting up this telescope, and I'm going there on Monday to see if they are doing well. Uh, it's, it's the issue of light. Here it is. So why do we want to have telescopes at four, three different locations? That's because we will always have night somewhere, right? If we are lucky, we can, only, we can also have night at two locations. That depends on a number of smaller issues. But basically, in this way, we get to observe our stars 24 hours a day and night. So that's why we need a global network of telescopes. Uh, that's uh, how our telescopes looks, look in South Africa. We have two of them, as I mentioned. They are closed in these domes. Uh, and a few more pictures of our telescopes. These are my students just finished setting up the first dome. And here is an, as a nice winter picture. We were unlucky to set up these first two telescopes in the middle of winter. And it's the only place in South Africa when it, where it's snowing. It was really bad. <laughs> uh, 
And here is Australia. Here you can see how we set up the first dome in Australia. It was also a winter in Australia. It's surprising, but it gets colder. It's really, it was really cold. So the uh, rain caught us and we had to break. We, we had to take a break and we finished the, the next day. So it took two days to uh, set up this dome. And uh, a few more pictures. These are our, uh, pictures taken from an airplane of our dome and our dome among other telescopes. And here is uh, South Africa. We are not there yet. Here you can see uh, my grad student in a red jacket. This is how you start your career in astronomy. <laughs> so we really do everything. This is the best way to, to achieve our goals. And uh, a few more pictures. This is the, the continuation. Uh, this, this is actually before what you saw earlier, the construction of the floor for the telescope and the dome, and uh, a nice winter picture of Alpha Telescope in South Africa. Hello. So what we can do with these robotic telescopes? We can tell them to, to work by themselves, but we can also control them with iPhones, iPads, laptops. We can do this all from tons of th uh, thousands of kilometers from Poland. We don't need to go there. So here's the Project Solaris, and the uh, presentation was funded by these uh, institutions, and the project itself is funded by these institutions, and the ERC grant helped a lot to get more funding. Our car current funding is 2.4 million euro, so it's more than just the starting grant. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Okay. Just two very quick uh, questions I have for you. When did you personally, and why did you personally start getting interested in looking up way into the sky? Why? Mm, there was an astronomy club when I was uh, in the first class of high school, and at that moment I decided to be a professional astronomer. And just uh, one thing, have you seen any signs of life on another world? Do you believe in that there must be life on other planets? Well, we hope so, but uh, we, are, we still do not have a proof of this. But I think in the next 20, 30 years we will have scientific evidence of uh, life on other planets. Okay. Well, I'm sure they'll get in touch with the European Commission uh, as soon as they uh, manifest themselves. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank Let's uh, go for your gift. Uh, Jacques. Uh... Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. There we are. Look at the camera. Jacques. Bonsoir. Thank you very much indeed. There we are, last uh, picture of Marche. Thank you. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I talk